With the growing popularity of using the Edge, it's now become more apparent than ever that you need to have a database that is globally distributed so it can sit alongside your compute. There's no point having Edge functions if your user is in the EU and your database is still in US East 1. So in this video, we're going to be looking at Terso, which allows you to globally distribute a database in minutes. Terso is a SQL-like database that allows you to replicate your data across the globe. It uses Fly IO under the hood to allow you to globally distribute your data. So the idea here is it's super quick, super fast, and the pricing is really scalable, even for just regular, you know, side projects or something that you're not sure about whether or not it's going to take off. So from the beginning, you get nine gigs total storage, which is quite a lot, up to three databases, up to three locations, a billion road reads, 25 million row writes, and then obviously there's TypeScript, Rust, Go APIs, and you can do local development support with SQLite, which is super cool. Um, and then obviously it works with all edge native and serverless environments. So if you're on Vercel or Cloudflare workers or wherever, you can do all of that. And then just from $29 a month, which gives you loads more storage, loads more locations, and then a bunch of other stuff. They just introduced this scale plan just recently. It's a pretty good pricing. It is comparable to others in the space. You're still getting around the same kind of pricing to performance and with replication, it does make a huge difference. So how does it work? Well, first, obviously you need to sign up for an account or obviously you can just log in. I'm just gonna log in because I already have an account. When you log in for the first time, it's probably going to show you a screen uh, where it tells you how to set this all up, but I've already been through that once. Essentially, this is your current database where you can do some administration work. Currently, the dashboard here, databases, storage use, locations, row reads and writes. All this stuff here is the only thing currently available in the dashboard, but they are working out ways that you can interact with your databases and obviously with analytics. But right now, you can do that all on the CLI. So let's go and play with the CLI. So the first thing you need to do is actually install the CLI, which you can do through Brew or other means, depending on what platform you're on. Uh, let's just go here and skip over to installation. So I'm using Brew, so I can just do this Brew install, and that will install it for us, and then we're ready to start using it. Uh, if you are using uh, other means, if you don't use Homebrew, you can use this script right here, and then once it's ready, you can use this, this command here. So let's copy this command, drop it in here, make sure we're on the right version, version 80. So I already had it installed, so that's why it's telling me to reinstall, but that's how you would do that. Now you can start actually building out and creating uh, a, a logical database here. So the first thing you want to do is this command right here. So we can do that, so terso db create. And if you don't give it a name, it will just randomly give you a name based you know, off of what Fly does. So we'll just do create here. And then it's gonna ask us a few questions. So first it's gonna create my DB in my closest location to me. So for that is Virginia for me. So just wait until this is finished. So now it's gonna ask you if you want to replicate this data by default. You can do it after the fact using the CLI. So we'll just say yes. And then it gives you an option of every location that is available to uh, your users. So what makes this great is that it actually gives you a, a suggestion about like where you should potentially go. So here it's saying, hey, we, we suggest this which is Frankfurt, uh, because you don't have coverage in the EU yet. So we can just type in RFA, hit enter, and now it's gonna replicate our database now into Germany. So now we have a replication in Virginia, and we also have it in Frankfurt. And then if we do it again, so now you can actually do a couple of commands here. So we have Terso DB show, and then the DB name, which is Chief Cami. Copy that, drop that in. You can see exactly uh, where this location is, which for this one is uh, Frankfurt and then obviously Virginia. And then we can actually make modifications to this. So if we want to create another replication, we can do that as well. So the CLI is pretty easy to work with. So you just type the words DB replicate and then the name. And because I've got it pasted, oh, I copied the wrong thing. It's Chief Cami. Remember, we can re replicate three times for free. So if you scroll up again, it'll probably give you advice about potentially where you can do it. Uh, but in this case, because we know 
that we have one in the EU and we have one in the US, the probably the next option is to hit something like Hong Kong KG, and then we'll replicate that as well. So now if we look at our, our DB again, if we just copy this, drop it in here, you can now see that we have, this is the name of my DB, this is its ID, and we can see that it's been replicated in these three different countries, and you can see actual DB instances down here. So we have Smart capped in Midlands, that's a primary location, which is in Virginia, and then we have our replications here, both in Frankfurt and in Hong Kong. So now at this point, we can actually start using this. So you can start using queries right in the shell. Obviously you can use this with TypeScript. You can also use this with Drizzle. You can use this with any of your ORMs that you're familiar with. Basically it's really easy to use and it works the same as any other database provider you may have. But I wanna show off some features about the product itself without actually going in and building something with it. So let's actually start using our database. Obviously we can make a local with SQLite, but for this we're going to use uh, the newly created DB. So the first thing we need to do is actually shell in. So you just do terso DB shell and then the name. So chief Cami. I, I, I really appreciate this name. It's very easy to spell. Okay, so it's gonna to connect to the database. We now here, so we can actually just type things like hello world and we'll just get an error message probably. So now we can type in to hit our shell here. You just need shell and then the name of your DB, which in my case here is Chief Cami. And then you can do like select, uh, hello world from message. Don't forget to put Let's do this again. So now we're ready to connect to our database. All you need to do is type terso, db, shell, and then the name. Obviously, if you're using uh, other means, but this just gives you an idea. And then obviously right now we can select star, do whatever. So let's insert a table into the database. So we just say create tables, users, text, email. So now we can do an insert. So we can do insert into users values and then we give it a number here so we'll just say 001 comma and then james at james perkins dev we'll close that out and then that will insert a value into our tables data we can now do select star from users now we know this works the bigger issue now is like how do we know if we're using the replication how do we know what's happening behind the scenes and that's where they have their uses cli so let's look at that while we're here so to do that, you can just do terso, well, first you need to quit out and then do terso db inspect and then the name. So it's chief cami. And you can see here, total space used 49 kilobytes, number of reads seven, number of rows written three. Well, that still doesn't really help us, right? We don't know how much usage per db. We don't know the usage per location, all that kind of stuff. So you can throw in a dash dash verbose at the end. So as you can see here, right now, my IAD, which is in Virginia, is the primary, and that had one road read and three road writes. And this one here has had six road reads and zero writes. So now we've played around with it. Our final thing here is just for me to destroy this complete database. So we can just do terso db destroy and then the name, which would be chief cami. It's gonna ask you if you want to delete this and all replications, obviously you just hit yes, and then you can destroy this. And there we go. As I stated, this is compatible with things like Drizzle. It also has Rust, Go, and TypeScript support. So if you're looking for a new database, definitely check this out. It makes it really easy to replicate your data and makes it really good for those edge compatible projects. Now, if you did make it to the end of this video, click right here. There'll be another algorithm driven one. Go on and enjoy it. And if you're not subscribed, why the hell not? Click right here.